Hey there, Sermon Bay Small Group friends. We are uh, leaning into one of our final teachings out of the book of Ephesians. We, believe it or not, I think next week is our last week in this book. And uh, man, the book of Ephesians is rich. It's been so good to just be studying it and working through it together. Um, today, we, we turn ourselves towards Ephesians 5 or 6, 5 through 9. And, uh, and hopefully you've read that and we can really take a minute and look at what does it mean for us in our context to know that the place where we spend a lot of our life, our work, is, is actually a primary way of displaying the gospel. Francis of Assisi, the Catholic saint, said it this way, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary use words. And I think that applies especially in this passage and in this, um, in this teaching. Really what we dove into is whether you're a follower, a laborer, or whether you're a leader, someone in authority, the call is the same. It's to use your life to make Jesus Christ known. So a couple of things. Here's what I think is important that you take out of the sermon. First of all, um, if you are a person who's working for someone, it doesn't matter how good or bad your boss is. That doesn't change the calling on your life to display Christ in that context regardless of how the authority is. So let's say you have a tyrant for a leader. Here's what I would say. Love that leader. It goes against culture and you're like, dude, you don't know how bad my boss is. I really don't. I don't, but I know this. You don't know what broke them. You don't know what broke that leader, the person in authority over you. You don't know what has happened that caused them to be such a tyrant, but you do know the one who can heal them. And your job is not to prove what a jerk or terrible person they are. Your job is to reveal Jesus Christ in the workplace and in the way you work. It's tough. It's not easy. But it's the example Jesus gave us when he served the disciples, even the one who would betray him by washing their feet, right? We understand that it's not easy, but it's what you're called to. For those who are in authority... I want this to be understood as well. You don't know what's breaking the people who are working for you. And scripture puts more responsibility on the leaders to be discipling other people. So if you're a leader and you lead people in your workplace, your job is not getting the bottom line right and making the right amount of money. That's a good byproduct of good business. Your job is discipleship. And in discipleship, one of the things you're supposed to do as a leader is to spot the God-given gifts and talents of those working for you and help them not only live to the fullest of their God-given gifts, but to know Jesus Christ and bring their gifts to bear on the kingdom. Your job is to raise people up and help them be the best they can be in Christ Jesus. No one's going to do that if you're a tyrant who's only focused on making money or reaching a certain number. You have to be engaged in the life of those who you are leading. So whether we look at leaders or people who are following, we understand this. Paul says to, for, for followers to obey their masters, not only to win favor when the, their eyes are on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Jumping down to verse 9, Paul says, And masters, do the same thing as your slaves. Don't threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master is also yours in heaven, and he shows no favoritism. It tells us this, that for leaders and for followers, the calling is the same. When you work, do your best to display Christ in your labors and be a servant of Christ. You're not working for other people. You're working using your gifted and talentedness for the glory of God in this life and hopefully the life to come for those around you. They get to experience Christ through your life. So I encourage you, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a boss or a leader, to serve. And if you're, if you're an employee and you work for someone to assume the best of them, but also your life is to serve those who you work for as though you're serving Christ. You are serving, you are there to work and give a good account of the giftedness you have for the glory of Jesus Christ. It is actually revolutionary in our day and age to say these things, but the work we do should testify to the glory of Christ. The first question that we have for today is what are the traits of a difficult boss? 
What are some of those things that make someone very hard to work with or work for? Talk about it in your group. And remember, even your bosses are people too. So be honest, but don't be careless in what you say about people. One of the things that was a big part of the sermon was integrity, and I really didn't touch on it in the sermon recap, but we need to understand that integrity is what Paul was referencing when he said, don't just work hard when your master's eyes are on you. Work hard all the time as though you're working for the Lord. Integrity matters. We must be the same people when people are watching and the same people when no one's watching. We either are a person of integrity or we are duplicitous. There's two different versions of us. We have to reckon with that. So knowing that integrity matters to God, we look at this question and I want you to kind of wrestle with the description. How do you describe integrity? How would you define it? When you read this passage, it has the language of, of slaves and masters. But in your day-to-day -day life, in the life you lead, um, apart from the ancient Greco-Roman world where their slavery was common, um, are you someone in authority or are you someone under authority? Don't let the language keep it in the past. Bring it to your current context. Are you someone who lives under authority or are you someone who is in authority? Talk about it in your group. In the message, I said um, that the instructions in Scripture in Ephesians is not contingent on whether or not we work for a godly employer or whether or not we have godly employees. Do you agree with that? Besides the workplace, where else do you find yourself either in a position of authority or find yourself under authority to someone else. Friends, I hope that this, this book, this teaching, this sermon-based small group has allowed you to see a very practical way that your faith can be visible to the world around you. If you work full-time, 40 plus hours a week, your faith can be a living billboard. And um, the way we lead and the way we follow reflects one, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope and trust you're able to do that well with um, some new clarity on the importance of how we do that. Bless you, and I hope your sermon-based small groups are awesome today.